Frank Sisson is my guest. He's an historian at the Canadian Institute of Ukrainian Studies at the University of Alberta. Frank, uh, good to have you back with us as part of our coverage today. Your thoughts on what we're seeing in Ukraine? Well, uh, what I think we're seeing is more or less what we expected. We knew that uh, Ukraine had no way of really uh, having a major defense against missiles or air attacks from Russia. Uh, I think many thought initially uh, that there would be an attack from the east, uh, cut off the army, and uh, perhaps uh, the Russians would not go after Kiev immediately. Uh, what they have shown, however, uh, I think by uh, these missile attacks, is that they are willing to uh, go to the extent uh, of becoming a danger for the entire country. I think much of the Ukrainian population, particularly in Kiev and areas more to the west, did not expect to come under this kind of attack. Uh, I think they've crossed a major Rubicon. I mean, certainly on the level of relations between Russia and Ukraine, it is hard to picture that the population generally will ever forgive even what has occurred up until this point. We know that they have moved into certain areas and taken over the Chernobyl nuclear power plant, something we were really very concerned about. And we know, uh, as we expected, that there would be an attack from the sea. And I think everyone uh, believed that there would be an attempt to take a chunk of Ukraine, whether just to Crimea or they would go all the way to Odessa might be a question. On the other hand, uh, still uh, internet is working in Ukraine. Uh, people are keeping contact. There is in many ways uh, elements that are almost unexpected that have not been touched so far. So mm. the question is, what does Russia do next? Uh, what does Putin plan? And of course, we hear much about the the list of people whom they are going to either assassinate or arrest. Right. Uh, and we assume they're going to try to topple the government as well. Right. Uh, Frank, we know now uh, Putin uh, is a bully. He always has been. But, you know, lied to the West for, for so long, has been planning this for months. Uh, and I wonder about the calculus here. You know, that, that Putin wants Ukraine more than the West is willing to defend it, if you follow that logic. And that he doesn't really care, Frank, about sanctions. He and his cronies are, are very wealthy. They've created a bunker in Russia. They're well protected. They've got lots of money. Foreign reserves in Russia, you know, are close to a trillion dollars Canadian that they can, they can kind of ride this out. Oh, and of course, Europe needs Russia's oil and gas as well. So I'm just, I'm wondering, you know, from, from Moscow's perspective, the, the sort of thinking here that goes on in terms of the hard, real, raw calculus. Well, of course, Moscow's thinking, what's Moscow's thinking and Putin's thinking mm. are the difficult things to say. That is, uh, one, the question is riding out. Uh, the calculation would have to be that after uh, a reasonable midterm time, the West would give up on the sanctions. If they do not, uh, then some of the elements of the Russian economy do not look as good uh, over the long term. If various technology is banned to them, financial contacts with the West, this will bite not only the general Russian economy, but even the circles close to Putin. So perhaps Putin is saying, well, I don't think they care enough about Ukraine. Where I think he is miscalculated is that by now, the entire NATO eastern flank feels endangered. Uh, they may talk about Article 5 all they want, but if you sit in Estonia or in Poland at the moment, you begin to wonder, really, uh, what is your situation going to be with what Putin has done? And then we've also got to remember that by using Belarus, uh, he has really upped the ante in endangering East and Central Europe. I think the Germans, uh, whether they want to or not, have to realize that they must find other sources of energy and that their plan for green energy is not going to work. It's too too far away in the future. Uh, and uh, so I think there will be uh, a decoupling. Now, will it be in time to save Ukraine in this situation? Well, that I think is a greater question. But I think uh, Putin may have made a number of major mistakes uh, that uh, will within the next decade, certainly, and perhaps in a shorter time, uh, have major consequences for Russia and for him as well. Frank, I appreciate you taking time, as always, for CTV News Channel. We'll be talking again soon, I am sure. Thank you.
Frank Sisson joining us. He is a Canadian-Ukrainian historian with the University of Alberta.